One last time round, shall we? I don't want to go. What he said. So here's a question for you. Have you ever wanted a service like Netflix, except you don't get to pick what to watch or when it's on? Have I got something for you. Last week, the CRTC ruled that cable companies need to provide a pick and pay service for customers, allowing them to pick what channels they want without being tied to a bunch of crap they'll never watch. But on top of that, they also have to include an entry level package that includes a bunch of local TV stations, also known as that crap that you're never going to watch. And those are probably gonna float around 25 bucks a month. You know, talking about cable companies is kind of like talking about your out-of-touch great-uncle who still thinks that floppy disks are the devil's work. In the end, what this will probably do is make cable packages more expensive, and it will probably destroy a lot of the smaller TV stations. Yay! Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a moment to remember all of those TV stations that we're probably going to lose in the next couple of years. Okay, so Orange is the New Black has shown up in the news a couple of times over the last few weeks. The first was when Jason Biggs said he wasn't going to be returning for season three, which... Good. But the second time was this week when the Emmys said that the Netflix show won't be eligible to compete in the comedic categories this year. This is a decision that makes sense to me. I always thought it was weird that a show that was very clearly a drama was competing for best comedy series. I bet you it has nothing to do with the fact that the competition for best comedy series is nowhere near as stiff as the competition for best drama series. I know the show has its dark comedy moments, but so did Breaking Bad. And yet for some reason one of those shows is a comedy and the other one was a drama. Yes, science! Now, the Emmys aren't until September, so they've got time, but it'll be interesting to see how Orange is the New Black holds up against the other shows, like Netflix's own House of Cards. If this story should teach us anything, it should be that the Emmys and the Golden Globes and all these other award shows have to look at these labels and figure out how to categorize shows accordingly. And then they can worry about picking the shows that actually deserve the awards. They still really need to work on that. Speaking of Netflix, do you guys remember a couple of weeks ago when the Wall Street Journal reported that they were developing a live-action Legend of Zelda series? Nobody remembers that? Really? Well, excuse me, princess. Anyway, on Monday, Nintendo CEO Satoru Iwata said that these rumors were inaccurate and said that there's nothing new to confirm with regards to Nintendo properties being adapted to film and TV. I can understand why they'd be protective of their games. Nintendo doesn't have the most spotless record when it comes to these kinds of things. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game, we're not like the others who get all the fame. That old Ganon's no match for the king. They're brothers. They're plumbers. Super Mario Brothers. This ain't no game. Yeah, nobody wants to remember those. But I seem to remember a certain April Fool's trailer from seven years ago that got all our hopes up. A Zelda movie could still work, though. It would be a three-movie epic, and the entire second movie would be the damn Water Temple! Screw that thing! If you've spent any time on the mobile gaming market, you may see that there's a noticeably absent company there. And to save you a bunch of embarrassing guesses, we're still talking about Nintendo. And that makes sense, considering Nintendo's systems have basically cornered the handheld market. But with the rise of smartphones and tablets, Nintendo recently partnered with developer DNA to publish Nintendo games for mobile devices. They had to get in on that sweet microtransaction money, after all. Sorry, I mean they're, uh, challenging themselves to redefine what Nintendo platforms mean. I'm sure the microtransactions are a little unintended bonus. Lose three lives in Mario? Give us 250 and get three more lives! Wait a minute, has anybody realized that we've basically just gone back to arcade machines? You know, like, with, with the quarters? Except it's way more expensive and a lot less fun. Actually, that thing I said about Mario makes no sense, since Nintendo already announced they're not going to be porting classic games to mobile devices. They're going to be focusing on new IPs instead. You're going to have to stick to your Wii U if you want to play classic games. But for you people in the mobile market, that means no Mario 3, no Super Mario RPG, no Metroid, no Legend of Zelda, no fun. I want to talk to you about anime. Stick with me, okay? A couple of years ago, there was an anime that came out based on a manga called Attack on Titan. If you don't know about it, I'll give you a condensed, very small, basic rundown of the idea. There are people, and there are bigger people who eat the normal-sized people. Normal people hole up in massive city with huge walls. Normal people are like, grr, kill big people. Potatoes, crazy flips, lots of shouting, A+. Plus. Now you're probably thinking, how popular could this possibly have been?
insanely popular. I haven't seen an anime blow up like this since Cowboy Bebop. What the hell is Cowboy Bebop? Shut up. It's apparently gotten so popular that it's getting its own live action movie, the first teaser of which was revealed last Friday. It's not gonna work. I say this mostly because condensing a multi-part epic into a feature film never works. But I'm thinking this might reach Dragon Ball Evolution levels of hilarious. What the hell is Dragon Ball Evolution? Exactly. Okay, so there's this trailer for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Oh god. So we've got Tom Cruise doing crazy person things and all the other usual suspects are here. Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg, Explosion, Motorcycle, 50 year old theme song. The movie comes out July 31st, but here's the thing. This is MI5. The next movie in the Mission Impossible series would be MI6. I fully expect a James Bond crossover movie, otherwise the entire world has been done a disservice. Because that's a movie where I would totally think about going to see it after seeing the trailer, but then I would think, nah, that sounds dumb. Don't you want that too? And now we go from Mission Impossible to Mission... What's happening at Algonquin? First up, we've got another movie night at the Commons Theater. This time it's The Hobbit, The War of Five Kings. I mean, The Battle of Five Armies. It'll be playing at 7 p.m. on Monday and admission is free. For one last time this semester, Dirty Bingo and We Yacht Game are coming back. If you don't know about either of these events yet, you've only got yourself to blame. Dirty Bingo's a good time, there are drag queens, there are prizes, there are bingo, and tickets are $2. Head down to the Alb on April 1st at 7.30 and check it out before it's gone. And on April 2nd, head to Student Commons for We Got Game. It runs from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are a ton of game systems and tournaments that will be going on all day. It doesn't matter if you're into Smash Bros, Call of Duty, there's something for everyone. The Cat Empire and Current Swell are gonna be stopping by the Commons Theater on April 14th. If you haven't heard of the Cat Empire, it's okay. For some reason, nobody knows these guys. We can still be friends though, don't we? The best description I've heard of them is Scott, kind of. There's also some jazzy bits thrown in though. Student tickets are 20 bucks, general prices are 30 bucks, and doors open at 7.30. They're weird. It's great. And so ends our little thing that we do here. Thank you very much for letting me and Safira yell things at you for the past couple of months. Usually this is the part where I tell you to subscribe, but since this is our last show, I'm actually going to link to a bunch of other videos we've done. We've all put a lot of hard work in this semester. It would be super cool if you guys would check some of them out. And that's all I really had to say, so now I'm just going to stand here awkwardly until my camera off laughs. She's already holding back laughter, so this isn't going to take very long. <laughs> Thanks, Ray.